anti-gay seminar. This is something that I have talked about before with people a little bit, just mentioning that I did it, but it's not something I've gone into very much detail about. I wanted to talk more about it, and how it was during my rough gark coming out with uh, harassment school, that stuff, um, parents not really accepting it, and one day I randomly got from my dad that they were going to go to an educational seminar and they wanted to know if I wanted to come. And I said, sure, you know, a weekend with my parents in San Diego, that, that sounded like that might be nice, and we weren't always getting along at the time, but I figured, you know, maybe this would be an exception, and so we started not getting along before the trip, and I thought it was kind of suspicious that I you know, my dad made a decent income or whatever, and I, I told him, you know, we're not getting along, I don't want to go, this isn't going to work, and my dad got frustrated and said, but this is what we planned, and I realized it wasn't really about the money, it was, it was about this plan, and I didn't really understand why this was, but then we go to this seminar, and there's picketers outside, and doing chants, and not really for whatever this was, and I realized there was something up with that, and I go to an hour this first hour of this seminar is called Love One Out, it was in San Diego, and the whole hour, it just sort of felt like I was crawling into a hole and dying the whole time. It was awful. It was such a, a dark, horrible view on what homosexuality was and what a bad lifestyle and how evil and, and depressed all homosexuals were, and the thing was is that it was so convincing at the time, but then I look back on some of those points and I just think that that doesn't really make any sense, but at the time it was so convincing, and there were a few points that really stuck out that even ten years later I still remember. I know that they mentioned how there was a certain percentage of straight people that cheated, and that for the amount of people that cheated for homosexuals, it was or the amount that hadn't cheated, it was zero. And I know that they said that was, they said, you know how gay guys are always looking after our s straight guys and admiring them? It's because they want to be straight. And what was the other thing? How when, if you have people saying that it's okay to be gay, and you think that it's okay to be gay, and then you act on being gay, that all those things, those things, and there was like more things, equals total acceptance, you know, it was trying to show ways that you don't have to pick that kind of lifestyle, like in, in a hopeful way, as if there's hope for not being gay, and it was just so horribly depressing and, and weird, and I had no idea I was even really going to this kind of seminar. And then, you know, it was a, either an hour or two hours, I'm pretty sure it was an hour, and um, it was a time for a break. And I went out to the picketers, because they were so happy and full of life, and they seemed to really be comfortable being gay. And from what I saw, it just seemed like parents that were in there, you know, which I guess is good, that not too many people are dragging their sons into it, none that I saw anyway, and I had a blast hanging out with the picketers right away, they were so friendly, and there was these two girls that were talking to me, and they, they started crying, and, you know, I later would find out that it was because they had talked to me, and I guess that really impacted them, because they said, you know, we shouldn't have to be here, and so I got invited out to eat, and then shopping, and window shopping, and the whole day, you're sort of flirting and kind of hooking up with this guy, Paul, that I really liked. And, you know, that ended up not really working out because, you know, we lived too far or whatever, but we were kind of on the phone for a while. I just called my one-day boyfriend. But they, anyway, food, shopping, window shopping, and by the time they bought me back after inviting me and all that stuff, um, there was about five minutes left of the seminar and they were watching that that um, episode of Dawson's Creek when I haven't seen Dawson's Creek but I guess the guy is talking to his dad or mom and saying you know maybe this is just part of who I am and he's crying and it's really emotional and I can tell my mom wasn't really happy with me 
having left for the entire seminar mostly, and I just felt so fortunate that I only went to what I went to because of how much it was messing with me just having already just gone to that little bit and me leaving and walking to the picketers and that little stretch of walk I was just thinking maybe I can change but the thing was I, I didn't want to change and that's that's sort of the point is that I never felt like there was anything wrong with me and now I'm 25 and I never felt like I was unhappy with being gay. I didn't feel like I was unhappy being gay when I was 15 either, but you know, you have parents and religious types and anti-gay seminars telling you how unhappy gay people are, and I didn't feel like any of that was true. It wasn't, it wasn't true for me. What made me unhappy was everybody wanting to give me grief about it that gave me grief about it, and, and plenty of people have, but you just kind of learn to separate yourselves from those people and build a foundation, a family, and a, a gay family, and everything else in a gay accepting family but a much later I would find in my dad's room parents guide to preventing homosexuality and would go through it and read things that were really making me angry and talking about how you should push your kid to change but try not to push too much and things like that and it made me look back on when I was 15 I'm now 25 and how my mom told a friend that to try to tell me it was a female, how it was a phase and how I wasn't going to be that way forever and my dad who once told me that maybe homosexuality was just something that I struggled with, you know, that he struggled with his own things and, and maybe homosexuality was just something that I struggled with and, and knowing all these things just shows me how clueless people can be about sexuality and that's as if they think that all sexuality must be just like theirs since they're straight and it was their natural magnet for them to go to the opposite gender that maybe everybody else is just like that and with early intervention and, and the right kind of pushing maybe they could have made me be the normal way and fix me and I knew someone in college who said once that he had gone to an anti-gay seminar and the mom wanted to make him do another one and he had said I already went to one why would you want to make me do another one well it didn't work and it's just awful that people think that they should try to fix their kids like that and just how depressing it is that at the time of my life where I really needed love the most is when I have to have that kind of rejection but the right thing I think for parents to do is to accept their kid with open arms and, and say that they'll love them no matter what and instead you know some kids get the anti-gay seminar and the bibles and the lectures and the church prayer and what have you and I wanted to share my anti-gay seminar and love one out experience I hope that this maybe answers some questions or brings some light to some people